Uh, welcome guys, this is go in our in the third part of our video tutorial series on, on NoCal.js CRUD application. So in, in, in the second part of our video tutorial, we basically, uh, you know, we basically we create a template. We have our view, we have few models, we have our database created and all those things. Uh, starting from here, we start using uh, our, um, you know, uh, web API. So very first thing, I would remember like we create this controller and this controller, only thing we have is a common base controller. From the base controller, only thing we are exposing, we are just exposing a property called underscore DB, and our DB context is created into the base, um, the abstract class, common base controller, and, and just to satisfy the requirement of web API, when this guy, this abstract class, is inher inheriting from API controller. Okay, let's let's define an, a method or, or API so that we can get all the degrees from our backend database. Okay, uh, to do that, this is the convention I'm going to use here. I'm going to say, all right, um, looks like it's running. I'm going to go ahead and kill this one, and I'm going to define a public method that's going to return i enumerable of degree view model. I'm going to name this API as get all degrees, okay? Okay, so this is the very first thing we're going we, we, to implement. So we're going to implement a method called get all degrees. And in, in this, we'll be using the, we, in real life with ASP.NET MVC, we have two ways of configuring configuration, like one is the you know the the, the convention based configuration and the attribute there are two way of routing one is that you know like convention routing with the configuration by the code but we can use attribute based routing here that's what i prefer to use which is more granular so i'm going to say a route and our route going to start with api i'm going to say a degrees okay degrees so, so the idea is right now I'm not gonna let's say just for now we're gonna return null. Um, of course, we have to have our implementation. So ideally, that the, our API now is gonna look like the domain and followed by the API followed by the degrees in the URL, right? Okay. Even before that, let's go ahead and implement. This would be pretty easy. So we're gonna say um, return. We into the base we have that DB context underscore db go into the degrees right and from that degrees we're going to return the projection uh, the projection we're going to return is i enumerable of degree view model we have the model degree we're going to convert that model into a view model so basically let's say d for degree in some lambda expression here new degree view model and let's set some of the properties here okay so if this instead of writing d it's, it's more like i'm going to rename this guy as a vm for our view models and then let's set some of the property for our view models the name would be vm dot name the ID would be bm dot ID, and since we don't, we're not really using description field, but just do. So we're going to say bm dot description. Okay. This is our basic, very simple implementation, right? We have db context in the base, and then we have this uh, db set called degrees. And once that degree comes in, we basically convert that degrees model into view model projection, and return that is i enumerable. So if everything is good, then then we are ready to consume this web service from the web, right? Let's go ahead and build. Everything is okay. Everything builds all right. All right, our build becomes successful. Um, before that, let's let me make sure here's my database and the table called degrees. I don't have any data in here, so. Right now, if I run this guy in the browser, um, in a Chrome browser, what happens? 
So I'm going to say, I'm going API in degrees. Okay. So uh, with this one, this this one kind of makes sense. This one is saying, hey, uh, because our view model is empty right now. That's and the other thing this browser does, I think by default, it looks like this is a default configuration. It is returning data in XML format. We don't we don't want it to return in XML format because we prefer to work with JSON all the time. So we have to do some configuration setting, okay? So let's, we're going to tell Visual Studio, hey, whenever you return data, uh, we want you to return in a JSON format from the database, not in XML format. Because XML format is very heavy, a lot of payload and stuff. Used to be like, it was popular back in earlier years, but not anymore, right? Okay. All right. So now what we have to do is we have to go into this, our uh, global.asax file here, and, and in here, one of the it's a web API configuration. It has a static method called register. Let's go in there. And we have to change some setting here. So we're going to say um, config. Config has a property called formatters. The very first thing we're going to do, we're going to clear that for any formatter because we're going to add a new custom formatter that we're going to develop. So we're going to say to this config formatters and say add method remember this guy formatter is the collection of media type formatter collection so basically we are defining new collection type and adding into it so let's say what we can add into this guy is something let's say um, my custom JSON formatter matter okay so basically we can add a, we're going to create a custom class of course this class right here called my custom JSON for matter doesn't exist in our system we can ask the Visual Studio to go ahead and create one for us he says okay generate a class called my custom JSON for matter in here so by default it creates the code into the app start for now it's okay but like later on maybe we can have our one formatter folder and maybe we can dump it there but just for now it's so let's look at the class created by Visual Studio called my custom JSON formatter so here this guy it, it created it's called type as internal by Visual Studio it's okay it is complaining hey um it is complaining because like there there are some abstract classes so basically what this guy is saying is this is an abstract class called media type formatter if we go into a deeper into hierarchy, there are some abstract method. See this, you can see right away here called um, abstract. Here's one abstract class, another abstract class. The, you know, if you know from us, as you know from the outside or into programming, this abstract means, you know, we need to provide the implementation. The inheriting class must provide the implementation, right? So that's what is complaining. But we don't want to go into that. But there is already a built-in a class called JSON Media, JSON Media Type Formatter. So this is what we can use because that the reason we can use this one is because the underlying lot of code is already implemented into this class here. If we go into this, it, um, it this is a class. This class implement basically base JSON Media Type Formatter here. And if you go deep down, eventually it, re it reaches into media type formatter. So basically, this is the you know the final guy where the, all the inheritance is occurring. So since all the thing that we need is already done by JSON media type formatter, we're just going to use this guy this guy here. Okay. So um, there is a couple of if, if we go into here, the, some of the method there are some uh, virtual method you know so. Um, we can override some of the virtual method. The one of the virtual meth method we're going to use is we can override is to to maybe one of the. Uh, 
override yeah this is the method I was looking for we basically overriding this method called say default content header system so um, we're going to override this method here and we're just going to call the base that is okay and last thing we can do to the headers as you as you know from the you know the HTTP header HTTP application programming you there is a uh, headers has a content type property so we're going to define a new content type here as you know from the json it's going to be something like application json this is the header right we define that's what the browser and the, and the server basically accepts. Browser notify that to the, hey, this is what we'll be using. Whenever you return data, this is the format I expect. We can override this one. Okay. All right. This is all we have to do, uh, basically. Um, I will show you one more thing we can do later, but just let's make sure, you know, our uh, we start getting JSON data instead of getting, um, you know, XML data that we have that we have currently. If I run again, uh, if I go into here, good. So this is what we want actually. So right now you might be wondering why we because the the, the server basically returned the empty you know JavaScript here empty because we don't have any data because from the database our database is empty so that's we can basically see what what's going on here um to console not the console i mean the network here here I wanted to resources here. It's a degree on network traffic. Okay. Oh, resources network sources it's a network here exitar oh sorry for that guys we don't have any browser it's not right we are just directly invoking the api right here that's not what i wanted to show you okay so uh since it is working now just to verify that next thing i'm going to do i'm going to add some uh, data into this table right let's go ahead and add a insert into a table called degree let's add a degree associate degree we're gonna afford this associate degree in our university and we have two columns right now for the for the, the the description we don't have any description so we're just gonna set a null value to it okay now if I run this one it should return okay see right here it is started returning the data that was the data that we added into um, into uh, our database and it basically invoked um, our degree controller. This is the method it was invoking. This is, you know, the, the custom route that we defined. And this method was invoked. And the data was returned. The projection was returned. Okay, that is... So just to confirm, you know, like we hit this breakpoint. I'm pretty sure it's working because we can see the data from the back, from the database into the... Okay. Let's run one. Well, actually, let's go ahead and add a new degree, maybe a um, master degree. Okay, we are adding new uh, entry. We're also going to offer some courses in master degree in our university or, you know, educational institution. And then, oh, what's going on? If I run this guy again, as you can see, it, it hit the breakpoint here. Which tells us, you know, it is working as you should. Um, this is cool. 
So it has an ID2, it has associate degree, and a, a new entry with ID3 and a master degree. And it returned very nice JSON data. You know, usually what I do, um, you don't really have to do it, but like in in the when while you are developing, you are in a development phase. Of course, this is a very simple example. In real life, your data might be very you know uh, nested or maybe very hierarchical in nature. And just to see, make sure your web, web API is returning correct data and all those things. I want to set one more property here. Uh, my custom JSON for matter into the constructor of this. I'm going to say um, there is the formatting default. There is a property called say default content header. What is the name of that? Basically, I want to see nicely formatted data. That's oh, the indent. Yeah, serializer setting. That is what I was. That's what I was looking for. Is the formatting equals to? It's an enumeration. So I'm basically choose the second, in, second, the first one indented. So as you will see, as you can see now, uh, when I run this, when I call this one again, I'm going to get rid of this breakpoint since it is working now. And if I uh, refresh this. It has nicely indented JSON data. Okay, as you can, this is this is much better for the eyes, right? While we're developing, this is good. We can debug it, whatever we need to do, you know. So this this is what we want while developing. But maybe once we are done with the development, we are ready to push into either test or a production. Then at that time, we can change our setting. Okay, that now. This is really good. So, so far now uh, our server side is not working. So this is going to be a very short video tutorial, guys. In next video tutorial, we will be start writing more code. Thank you so much for watching videos.